If you are new here, this channel is all about educative stuff. So don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button and hit the notification bell for instant updates. Hello guys, in this video we are going to solve section B of paper 2 in computer science and the paper code is May June 2020. So without further ado, let's start. Coming to the first question of section B or the second question of this whole paper, since we are not going to see section A or the first question, it has been excluded. So since you should not be confused, I am just going to go by this uh, numbering order. So second question. Most programming languages include basic data types. Ahmed is describing the basic data types he has used. State the data type that Ahmed is describing in each sentence. Choose the data type for this list of programming terms. So what they are basically telling is they have given a description and we have to select the appropriate data type for the description. So the first description is a number with a fractional part that can be positive or negative and used in calculations. So most of you might get confused whether it's going to be real or an integer. The integer data type can only have a whole number that can be positive or negative. But when it comes especially as a fractional part like 1.0001 or something like that, it's always going to be a real data type. And a second description which is uh, a whole number that can be positive, negative or zero and used in calculations. As said for the previous uh, description, it's going to be integer. And the third description, a single number, symbol or letter. So this basically has two data types which can be a char, which is character or a string. A character is nothing but, uh, as said in the description, a single number, symbol or a letter. But a string can have as many numbers or symbols or letters as possible. So you can write any of both character or string. You are going to get the mark, so don't worry. And the next description is a sequence of characters. As I explained for the previous description, it's going to be a string. A data type with two values, true or false. With no doubt, you can just write boolean. Because when it comes to values or something like true or false, you can go for boolean. So that's it. The second question has been completed. Let's move on to the third question. Coming to the third question. So what this third question is about is that they have given us an algorithm in this algorithm there are like nearly four errors and they have sent us to spot them and at the same time give the correction for the error so that's what we're going to do now first let's see what this algorithm does so what this algorithm does is that it just inputs the name and marks of 35 students and it stores the name and mark inputted into two arrays which are name and mark and the highest mark awarded is found and the number of students with the highest mark is also counted and finally they are outputting it. So this is what this algorithm basically does. So the first error if you see this algorithm is in line number 1. So highest mark is set to 100. Actually it should be set to 0 or some kind of a, the lowest value. So the lowest mark that person can get in an examination is obviously 0. So we should just set the highest mark equals 0. That is the right correction. And the second error in this algorithm is in line number 7. So they have given here mark counter. Actually if you see this algorithm thoroughly, there is no variable counter at all. It should be count. So that is the mistake and uh, instead of counter, we should have it as count. And that is the correction. And if you write it, you get a mark. And the next error is in line number 10. They have written as highest mark students equals highest mark students minus 1. Actually, it should be plus 1 because each time a student gets the highest mark, we should be counting them or adding it by plus 1. We should not, we should not be subtracting it by minus 1. So that is an error. And the last error in this algorithm is in line number 14 which is mark count equals highest mark actually it should be the ulta it should be highest mark equals mark count and if you have correctly spotted all the errors in it and given the correct correction to it then you can back four marks easily 
coming to the B part of question number 3. So in this we have to explain how we could extend the algorithm to also find the lowest mark awarded. Count the number of students with that mark and output these values. So if you see in this initial algorithm, they were just uh, they were just telling the highest mark and the students with the highest mark. So in now in section B, we have to explain them what lines of code can be added to this program so that this algorithm can also count the lowest mark at the same time the students with the lowest mark and if you see it clearly they have said this to only explain they haven't said this to write the whole algorithm so yes first we have to add a variable called lowest mark equal to and we have to set it to an highest number so usually exams are conducted for 100 so i have just written it as 100 or you can just set it to any kind of uh, higher value like 1000, 2000 or anything you wish. And you must also add another variable lowest mark students and we have to set it to 0 since we have to count the students with the, uh, with the lowest mark. And then we have to check if the inputted mark or the mark count is equal to lowest mark. And if this condition is true, then we have to limit 1 to this lowest mark students. And again, we have to add another conditional statement where we check mark count or the inputted mark is less than lowest mark. That means the lowest mark variable value is no longer the lowest mark. The mark count or the inputted mark is the lowest. So if this condition is true, we have to assign the lowest mark variable with the inputted mark and then we have to set the lowest mark students to 1 and then finally we have to add another extra output statement where we output the lowest mark students and the lowest mark and if you have explained this clearly then you can get 6 marks out of just this that was the end of the question so coming on to the fourth question so the fourth question is this flowchart includes the points won and the points lost when playing a game. The difference between the points won and lost is calculated and depending on the result the player can move up to the next level, stay at the same level or move to the previous level. The flowchart finishes when the input for points won is minus 1. And the A question for it is that we have to complete the trace table for the set of input data. And the input data are these. So let's start the flowchart. So in the flowchart first they have given us the input points 1 and points lost. So the first two input data is 5000 and 4474 and we need to input them and, and then it has asked us is points 1 is equal to minus 1. No it is not minus 1. So we have to move to the next box and it has said that difference equal to points 1 minus points lost. And the difference is 5000 minus 4474, which is 5026, and we have to update that to our trace table. And then coming to the next decision box, is difference greater than or equal to 1000? No. Is difference less than 0? No. So we have to output keep on trying, and that is what we are also doing here. Then it moves on again to the input and we have to input points 1 and points lost again and the next input data set which we have given is 6055 and 2000 is points 1 equal to minus 1 no difference is 6055 minus 2000 which is 4055 is difference greater than or equal to 1000 yes it is greater than 1000 so we have to output build well and move up and again it moves on to the input and the next input data set is 7900 and 9800 is points 1 equal to minus 1 no then difference is points 1 minus points lost so points 1 is 7900 subtracted by 9800 it gives us a negative value of minus 1990 and we have to update that to our difference is difference greater than or equal to 1000 no is difference less than 0 yes so we have to output sorry move down and that is what we are also outputting and then uh, it again moves to the input and now we have to input 3000 and 2150 as it is given in the input data set is points 1 equal to minus 1 no so the difference is points 1 minus points loss so it is 850 and we have to update the difference then 800 and 
fifty is greater than or equal to thousand? No. Is difference less than zero? No. So we have to output keep on trying, and it again goes to the input, and the next input data set which they have given us is minus one and six thousand seven hundred. So points one is minus one and points lost is six thousand seven hundred. Is points one equal to minus one? Yes. And so the program ends. So this is the trace table for this given input data set. So let's move on to the B question. Coming to the B question, the B question is the flow chart needs to be changed. When the difference is more than five thousand, the output message is fantastic leap of two levels. Describe the changes that will need to be made to the flow chart. So what they have tell so what they have told us is just to describe the changes. They haven't uh, told us to alter the flow chart and write down them here. So you have to just explain them. So to check whether the difference is greater than five thousand, we have to add a decision box above the is difference greater than equal to thousand, which is above this decision box. You have to add another decision box saying is difference greater than five thousand. And if yes, we have to add an output statement saying fantastic leap of two levels, and we have to connect it to the input. And if the decision box, which is is difference greater than equal to five thousand, is false. Then we have to connect it to this decision box, which is is difference greater than equal to thousand. If you explain this or describe this, you can easily get three marks. So this is about the question. So let's move on to the next question. Coming to the fifth question, which is arrays are data structures used in programming. Explain what is meant by the term dimension and index in an array. Use examples of arrays in your explanations. So before answering this, I will just answer what an index is, so you will have a better and a clear idea of what dimension is. So an index is the location of an element in an array or a list. Like say in the example, the variable array has an array which contains one, two, three, four, and five. If you need to access any of these element inside this array variable, the location or the number you specify to access this element is called an index. Like say Array zero. Like say, if you are printing array zero, it will return you or print you number one because in an array the index start from zero. So one is zero, two is one, three is two, four is three, and five is four. So the zero, one, two, three, four, which I was saying, is the location of the element. Located inside this array variable, so that is what this index is. Don't get too confused. It's just simple if you just try it out once. So then dimensions. So dimension is the number of indexes needed to access an element in an array. Like say in a two-dimensional array, this is also called as nested array, where a list is where an array is inside an array. So inside this 2D array variable, if you need to access the element 10, which is this number 10, you need to pass in two indexes. So if we just print this 2D array square brackets one and again in square brackets four, then this will return you the number 10 or print you the number 10. Unlike this where we had one index, here we are here we are having two indexes. So if there are three indexes, then that means it is a three-dimensional array. If it has four, then it is a four-dimensional array. So that is what this dimension means in an array. So question five is completed. So let's now move on to the final last question. Sixth question: A database table juice is used to keep a record of cartons of fresh juice available for sale. So this is the database table they have given, and the first question is. Identify a suitable field to use as the primary key. State a reason for your choice. So primary key is something that is unique throughout the column. So the only field that has unique set of values is the juice code. So the field juice code is the primary key, and the reason is as I said, it is a unique identifier. In the B part of the question, they have said us to complete the query by example grid to display only the stock levels. And size of all cartons containing only apple juice. So first, let's just uh, fill by the fields. So the field names that are needed to do this query by example grid is fruit one, 
group 2 size and stock level and then the table the table for all of these are going to be the same it's going to be just juice and then uh, in sort they haven't said anything and show they have just said us to show the size and the stock level so we have to tick it here and then the criteria the criteria for it is the cartons containing only apple juice so that means fruit one should be apple and fruit two should be apple so the criteria is equal to apple equal to quotation apple and that's it if you just run this query by example group then it will return perfectly what they have asked in the question so that's it guys thank you for watching this video hope you understood and see you in the next interesting video thank you.